intend, visualize, and hope. Think about those three words. Just those three words. The, the English language is such an amazing thing. Let me say that again. Intend, visualize, and hope. Is there any other purpose for humanity to intend, visualize, and hope? Hello, Sue. Is there any purpose for humanity? There is none. In fact, it is our salvation. Dear Lord, hear me when I'm offering. It's our salvation. To intend. I intend a better world. Hello, Debbie. I intend a better world. I visualize. In fact, vision is not about this. Vision is about this. The heart. I intend a better world. I visualize a better world. And I hope for a better world. If you've ever seen the movie The Shawshank Redemption, the actor, what's his name, Tim Robbins? He says, Hope is a great thing. In fact, it's probably the best of things. Think about that. Take that in for a moment. Hope is not only a good thing, but it's probably the best of things. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We don't. And so all we can do is intend, visualize, and hope. Hello, friend. That's all there is. There is nothing else. It doesn't have to be difficult. What if the purpose of your life, the purpose of my life, the purpose of our lives is just to intend, visualize, and hope. Hello, Allie. Not only for good things, but the best of things. For all people, for all races for both sex hello John all nationalities all creeds all codes intend visualize and hope hello Carol I can't speak for anyone else but myself and I'm going to take this bragging point pat myself on the back Life is so amazingly beautiful. And if it's not that for you, I feel for you. And I want that for you. I just want that for you. Whatever that means for you, however that shows up for you, whatever form that may take, I want that for you. I love you. Things are changing for me in such a way exponentially I couldn't stop it if I tried nor would I want to expansion into bliss is an amazing thing Keith what are you talking about I understand what that means hello Pamela hello Carolyn like for bliss is an amazing thing so what is bliss? It means there is no more fight. And there is no more worry. There is no struggle. There is no more contemplation about anything. And all you're left with is just... <laughs> just being in the gate. The gate to God gate to the stairway to heaven Jacob's ladder the spiritual ladder the spirit which ritual ladder things are moving get on board the train 
that it has such an amazing momentum that's propelling everyone forward. Get out of the fight. Stop fighting with Donald Trump. Stop fighting with Hillary Clinton. Clinton, stop fighting with politics. Stop fighting with racism. Stop fighting with racism. Stop fighting with separation. It's just stop fighting. It's all an internal bickering. That's all it is. It's just an internal yakking, an internal noise. It's great, great, great. Gail Resnick says, sending love to you. Keep on keeping on. Ah, you're so sweet, Gail. I remember you very clearly. And the words, the beautiful wisdom that you offered me Gail, when I was going through a time of transition, it means a lot to me. So I'm hanging out late night after a music gig, and the words resounded within me. Maybe bold. God spoke to me like it speaks to all of us, but I heard the call, and it was intend, visualize. <laughs> And make it happen. Intend, visualize, and hope. Again, like the movie Shawshank Redemption. Check this out about the Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> Stephen King. Everybody busted his ass by saying, Ah, oh, well, you're Stephen King. So everything you're going to do from this day forth is always going to be gold and solid and monumental. So he changed his name to shut people up, basically. And then he created Shawshank Redemption and the Green Mile under an, an anonymous name, not Stephen King. Because he proved it was not about me being Stephen King. And the Shawshank Redemption and the Green Mile was his two best achievements as far as the effect it had on the masses. He shut that system down. Two of his best piece of work. So again, back to the point of this broadcast late night after gig is intend, I intend this to happen for me. Right, friend. Right. Hello, Jeff. Right, friend. Intend, this is what I'm wanting, going for to happen. Visualize. There's no way it's not going to happen. A blind man once said, Climbing Mount Everest has nothing to do with seeing. It has everything to do with vision. A blind man once said that climbing Mount Everest has nothing to do with seeing. It has everything to do with vision. <laughs> How powerful is that? So vision is greater than seeing. And hope is an amazing thing. In fact, it's the diamond in the peanut butter jar. Keith, what does that mean? Is some crazy Keith Blanchard say? <laughs> Think about it. Imagine a peanut butter jar and there's a diamond in it. And though the diamond is pure and flawless, it takes millions or whatever years to compress, to conform and contort and express itself as this brilliant, beautiful jewel that lives not only in the diamond, it lives in all of us because we're all a jewel that has been around for millions upon millions of years that have been compressed into life. And we are of carbon, which diamonds are made of. And we're all this solid. We're all this jewel. We're all this dynamic of that which is brilliant and radiant. Like a diamond. Radiant and brilliant. 
and we exude and express. Hello, Steve Shanks. And we exude and express. Exude and express. And when you are in your essence, dear Lord, listen to me what I'm offering to you. Please. When you are happy for no other reason except for just to be happy, something begins to transpire in you and in your life and it begins to affect not only other people because as you affect those who are close to you in proximity it begins to affect the others close to them in proximity because as you pass the torch of divine light trust me when I tell you it's more easy to carry the torch of divine light than it is to carry the burden of ignorance, pain and fear Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Divine light. It's everywhere and it's everything. And it's always brilliant and radiant. And that brilliance and radiance lives in you as you. It is you. It is the reason you are born. We're born. Life is not difficult. So if you're here, as I do this late night broadcast, and you find yourself in a position in your life that things are difficult, stop. Hello, George. Just stop. Stop the wanting to fight. Stop the bickering monkey mind noise. There's a monkey that lives in all of us. A monkey. And it wants a banana. And it's going to bitch until it gets his banana. So don't piss off the monkey in your monkey mind. Give it the banana it wants. And stop fighting it. And stop fighting with it. Pet your monkey. Be best friends with it. And assure it that everything is okay. And when you do that, the monkey begins to become silent. You shut it up and the silence becomes profound. And so when you get out the monkey. And you get into the spirit. It's it's truly, truly. It's not an ad. It's. This is not just idle words I'm offering to you because I'm trying to be an illumined spiritual teacher. What I'm saying to you is there's an ooh ooh ah ah going on in all of us. Right, wrong, in, out, up, down, good, bad, hot, cold, blessed, and blasphemous. It's all shit. It's noise. Monkey minded noise. Listen to the music I'm playing right now. I'm going to turn it up. Listen to this. Take a breath. In fact, you deserve it. Give yourself the gift of this breath. Hello, Nina. Give yourself for a moment, regardless of who's around you, Give yourself the gift of taking a breath, five breaths, ten breaths. And listen to this music. And it's taking you somewhere. And it's taking you to a very beautiful place. My question to you, and I know this may affect some of you. Why as my offering of this beautiful place, trying to invite you and support you into falling to it, making you afraid? Why is the idea of this beautiful place, the kingdom, the kingdom that lives in everyone, Dear Lord, it lives right here in everyone. And all that requires 
to be there. It's just to be there. Why does it possibly make you afraid? Is it because you feel you're not deserving of it? That I'm too scared to fall because I'm not going to trust that the parachute is ever going to open? That if I open myself up too much, that some demonic force is going to come in and invade and intrude my life? That is not real whatsoever. It doesn't serve you. It will never serve you. And it's keeping you from the kingdom. So what is this kingdom you're speaking about, Keith? It's been written about in all scripture. It's etched on your heart. It's etched in every scripture. The Quran, the Torah Ora, the Bible, the Bhagavad Gita, it's all the same grace. Why are we as humans so scared of peace? Because peace is power. It's divine power. But it's not the kind of power that we learned growing up. Because the power we learn growing up is reprimanding. It's punishing. It wants to spank us on our ass with a board when we're in school and our principal spanked us and our peers spanked us and our authority spanked us and our parents spanked us and the government spanked us and law enforcement spanked us. It's not like that whatsoever. So we keep ourselves in the kingdom because we're afraid of power. This power is not like that whatsoever. And until we recognize and reveal that, hello, Linda, until we realize that to dwell in the kingdom, that there is no spanking, there, is, there are no peers, there is no government, there is no church, there is no authority, there is no parents. When you get to that place, hello, Angela. When you get to that place, that very, very simple place of being, it gets really, really easy and really, really cool. So tonight's broadcast is called Intend, Visualize, and Hope. For basically for a better world and as I said earlier if you ever watched the movie The Shawshank Redemption Tim Robbins the actor of the movie at least his role he says hope is a good thing probably the best of things and in the word hope the word hope embodies intend and visualize because really there's nothing else we can do. Nothing. We cannot. Some people can. I can. Sometimes you can. Sometimes we all are able to have a glimpse of the future. And the more we become spiritually endowed and practice our walk, the more we're able to vision the possibility of a future. But there are many possibilities of future. They're all different dimensions, all different paralyzed Paral par parallels of earth but we're looking for the highest one we're hoping for the highest one and we're open to the highest idea then we get glimpses of the highest idea as I am practicing in my life pat on the back key pat on the back for you when you live in hope visualization and intention there is nothing else. It's going to go down the way you involve yourself to help it go down. There is no other gig in town. There is no other rock star. There is no other band playing at your favorite venue. You are the rock star. You are part of the band that's playing in your favorite venue. Your life is the movie you make. It's happening now. And what I'm suggesting in 2018... What's happening is, it's getting real. 
It's always been real, but it's going to get so real, you can find yourself being liberated and crossing the bridge into the divine parent and suckling on your divine mother's bosom and getting the divine milk and ambrosia, or life is going to kick your fucking ass. Did Keith the spiritual just say the word fucking? I did. And I did it intentionally and consciously and purposely because it's a word that represents power. I got your attention. So I used that word not out of blaspheme or cursing because it is power. Sue Lindsay said, I've got a lot of shadow work to do with my inner child. I have found out where my anger issues come from. Good for you, darling. And the truth is that I keep putting it off because I'm scared. Why? So I have to, no idea. I have to press this button. Give me a second. So I really need to tackle this. Sue, as you know, because you are a supporter of mine, you can send me a personal private message at KeithAnthonyBlanchard at gmail.com. Say, Keith, let's talk. But Sue, I'm going to challenge you on purpose. I'm going to challenge you, Sue. You ready? Because in my challenging you, if you take me up on my offer and my challenge, something greater is going to happen than if you and I did it privately. And you may say, Oh my God, Keith, you're scaring the piss out of me. What is that? It's not required of you. I'm not trying to call you out in front of all these people and make light or fun or trivialize your scenario, dear. I'm not. But since you're confessing, let's do it now. Because if you do it now, we have all these people watching that will see you unfold in front of me and in front of you and in front of them. And then you will receive more than you ever would have in a one-on-one -on -one session with me. Because organically and naturally, you will become vulnerable. And invulnerability is becoming naked raw to use the word naked we always implied like raw sexual sensual revealed we don't have to get crazy or extreme with your idea of wanting to tackle your said condition but if you want to ping pong with me let's do it in other words you're confessing you're witnessing but by again by no means am I calling you out if you want to keep it general and vague, that's okay. But the simple question I would ask you, dear, is you said, I have a lot of shadow work to do. Uh, I have a camera issue. Give me a moment. I have a lot of shadow work to do with my inner child. Up to you, dear. So just hanging out late night. Let me see what time it is. I got a couple more minutes. So everyone who is here, I can't see. Let me actually get on my Facebook. I love acknowledging the people that hang out with me and support my work. And your work, our work, being better humans. Better people. Just better whatever. So give me a quick moment. Better whatever. There we go. So just a heads up for those who are listening. March 11th at 5 o'clock in Memphis, Tennessee. Cardova, Tennessee, Memphis. I'm going to be doing my, one of my first presentations in a very long time. About my new book I am writing now it's almost done almost it's been written by all these bursts of light like I'm doing now 
And then one day I realized, oh my God, I just, I just channeled a book from God, created my higher self, spirit, whatever you want to call it, by doing this burst of light. And it's been transcribed, and I'm fashioning that now. So I'm doing my first talk for this tour, hopefully, uh, March 11th at 5 o'clock at Unity Church on Walnut Grove on radical transformation. Just like exactly what I'm offering right now. You and me. There's no other bullshit. You and me. In fact, it's not even me, it's you. We're just talking. Hanging out. You're not broken. No one, I will never imply that you're broken. I will imply that if you want something to a greater magnitude and you just might be boogered for the moment, I don't begin to profess that I have all the answers. All I have to offer is what I have what I know has worked for me and in my gesture to you as a gift in my heart please take it so in my presentation of radical transformation it's about being here now right now there is no yesterday there is no tomorrow it's not guaranteed and yesterday's gone so all we have is now and I have an un I'm confident it's not cocky or, or egoistic I will open you up I will press that button provided that you are willing to be opened and willing to take in something new and to get out of cognitive dissonance and willing to accept something that may go against the grain of what you were taught. Because you can bet your sweet ass if you have a fear of water and you want to learn and you want to grow, and you're asking me to help you, if you have a fear of water, and you and I are standing next to a river, I will grab you and throw you into the river. Ask anyone who follows my work. I will grab you and push you into the river. Because in the river that you are scared to death of being in, you will find your way on how to swim to the shore of safety and peace. That's the trust I have in you. As I push you into the river of life. So in the river of life. You can be hard as a stone. And we know that stones create rapids. That have to be ridden out in care. Or I can push you into the river. And you're consciously aware of what I'm offering to you. And ride it like a raft. Merrily. Merely, merely, life is but a dream. Because you can bet your ass that there is nothing upstream that you want. There is nothing upstream that you want, dear Lord. There is nothing upstream that you want. Because upstream is like moving like a salmon upstream only to be eaten by a bear. There's nothing upstream that you want. Nothing. Nothing upstream that you want. Nina says, will your book be translated into Norwegian? At least, sweetheart, not right now. But I will send you a copy if you ask me again tomorrow, remind me. Rod Bland, ladies and gentlemen, I just had a beautiful conversation with my brother Rod Bland. This is not about dropping names and keep being showing off and blame blame. Rod Bland is the son of the world-renowned blues legend Bobby Blue Bland. And right before I, I saw Rod tonight, I just got finished singing Good Day for the Blues, which is Bobby Blue Bland. It was good to see you, my brother. What a beautiful, amazing drumming fool you are, sir. It was good to connect with you again, Rod. <laughs> so tonight's broadcast, late night broadcast, before I sign off here shortly, I got about another 10 minutes at most. Is intend, visualize, and hope. Like in the movie The Shawshank Redemption, Tim Robbins, the actor, said, Listen to this, please, with your heart, with the life breath in you, for every, anything that means everything and for everything that means anything. Hope is a good thing. 
probably the best of things. There is nothing else, and that is all we have. Hope. I don't mean blind faith hope. I don't mean blind hope. I don't mean, oh, I'm hoping for this to happen. That is so superficial and not what I'm implying at all. What I am implying and suggesting is to do this and fall right there. And when you live in that place of hope, it becomes a capital hope, all caps, H-O-P-E, exclamation pointed three times, underlined, bold printed. It's not just, oh, I hope this happens and I'm flipping about it. That is horseshit. It's deeper than that. It's falling into the stargate, the cosmic womb, anything that means everything and everything that means anything. And it lives right there. It's the way of the Christ. It's the way of the Buddha. It's the way of the lotus flower. It's the way of your life. It was the way your life is intended to go. And your life will go that way as it was intended. When we intend it to go that way. It's not rocket science. Dear Lord, it's not rocket science. It's not what we're taught. It's what is innate in all of us. And we know it. And we knew it then. And we know it now. But because of all the monkey mind bitching noise from society, peers, parents, authority, indoctrination, familiar noise, we've lost sight. Sight. I don't mean seeing. Let's say that right now, metaphorically, I have my glasses on because it helps me to see. That's not what seeing is. I'm using the glasses to help me see. But if I take my glasses off and I close my, my open eyes, then I have vision. Vision. True vision has nothing to do with seeing in a physical capacity. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. When your heart is open, <laughs> dear Lord, you can see so far beyond what your physical eyes can ever begin to imagine what that is. This is seeing. I've been seeing a whole my life, my whole life, and I see pretty good. Oh my God, is this what seeing really is? As I put my glasses back on, yes, I'm telling you, that is what seeing really is. It has nothing to do with your eyeballs and the sockets of your head. Seeing is a way to take in information. You can see with your ears. You can see with your feeling base. You can see with the taste in your mouth. You can see with the smell that comes through your nostrils. You can see with your touch. That is seeing. Seeing implies a taking in of things. A vision implies I'm for seeing. Not only for seeing, but for seeing. And I stand for that. And I'm planted in that. In fact, there is no other way it's going to happen. Because I am the rock. I am planted. I'm watering the plant and not the weed because I'm planted. And I'm Peter the Rock. And not only do, and I intend, I visualize, and I hope. Hope is a great thing. Probably the best of things. It's not about being afraid. Oh dear Lord, I hope this happens because the world is going awry. And my life is going awry. And things are amok. In fact, in fact, that attitude is not about hope. It's hopeless. It's hopeless. Sue says, Keith, oh dear Lord, I can't believe she's gone there. She accepted me on my offer. For those who are listening to this presentation, Stop what you're doing. 
Just stop. Shut your phone off. Stop. My dear sister in Christ, your cosmic sister as well, took me up on my offer. She said vaguely, this has been happened, this has happened in my life. And I called her on it. And I said, step up and own it. Let's go to church, confess it, make it known, become vulnerable in front of all these people. And she said, okay. Sue, Lindsay, I applaud your courage. You are intending. You are visualizing. And you are hoping. And you are probably the intuitive reason. And I have no doubt. About the inspiration of this broadcast. So thank you for that. Moving through my heart. She says. Publicly. Vulnerably. Modestly. Honestly. Witnessing. Keith as a child I was beaten. All the while I wanted to challenge. I prayed. I pleaded and I cried. I got angry. I have carried a barrier with me ever since I got married give me a moment I, I, I got angry I have carried a bear with me ever since I got married I was beaten the anger again surfaced. I need to let it go. I don't want to stomp around angry for all of my life. I want to let go. I am naked. <sighs> I could tell you, Sue, my heart hurts for you. But that would be a lie. I'm actually overjoyed for you because what you just said publicly hear me when I'm telling you Sue I'm going to say that again on purpose hear me when I'm telling you Sue and I'm going to say it again on purpose hear me when I'm telling you Sue is by you taking the initiative not only to tell me privately to say in front of all these people, you are right, you are naked. And in your vulnerability, in your nakedness, and we know nakedness always to be implied to have a connotation of shame. We're naked, so I'm being shameful. That's dirt. And the space you're existing in right now is going to change it all for you. Because you have crossed the threshold. You've came to the halfway point. You've admitted. You've owned up. I'm proud of you. Good for you. It's going to change immediately, rapidly. It's going to exponentiate. And I am always here for you. Not that you're broken. I'm here as your support system. And you can lean on me anytime you want. So what I now intend, vision, hope and see for you it's going to change completely this happened to you as a child and then it reflected itself and read its quote ugly sue hear this i could have said it read its ugly head again but i'm going to change that dialogue and i had to say that only so it could come back and change it because now it makes a point the reason it when it happened to you as a child, and then it resurfaced as an adult when you were married, it read its ugly head, but I'm going to change that now. It read its beautiful head, because in karma is grace. People think karma is an ass whipping. Karma can be an ass whipping, 
but karma is God's grace saying, I'm bringing something to you and will forever bring it to you because I love you, because you're my divine child and all I want for you is absolute eternal bliss. And as a child, you may not be, have, be able to have a handle on it. Tell the studio, a child. With the hopes of, as an adult, that maybe you could have grasped it or had a handle on it. And though you may not have had a grasp on that in your marriage, you have a grasp on it now because, or a hand on it now because now I'm handing you something. The monkey mind noise, the riddle, the joke, the cosmic humor will stop for you, like you said, because you're naked. You exposed yourself and fessed up to your karma. This happened to me as a child. This happened when I was married. I don't have the answers, but I'm offering this up in the form of sharing this with all these people who are not only in this room right now, but the hundreds of people in the future that are going to see this broadcast and know all of my intimate secrets. You have walked, dear Lord, dear lady. <clears throat> Another step towards the kingdom. We can talk more about this at any time you like. I'm proud of you, dear. There is so much that has taken place in your simple words about fessing up and revealing a very private, dear Lord, not private, the correct word is sacred part of your life. Something that means everything to you in your growth and the bullshit that has happened to you and I want to offer one more thing to you Sue before I close my dialogue, dialogue off with you Sue if you're with me and you trust me and I know you do because I trust and believe in you do this for me do this for you take a breath take a breath and Sue right now you're about to shift into a monumental divine way. I know that. Take another breath. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. So you talked about letting go. I want to let go. Stop it. Let go. And experience the bliss that will well up inside of you when you do. I love you. I love you. <laughs>